everlasting God, we want to bless you this morning because you are awesome, Father. We thank you for the great work you have done, and we thank you for the privilege to be in your presence. I say that thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Lord, as we go into this program, and I pray that your presence will be upon our life, that your hand of power, O oh God, will move in every area of our life. Lord, that you will fight our battle for us, and you will give us victory on every side, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, precious Father, stretch forth your hand to do great things, manifest your signs and wonders. And as many that are bound, Lord, set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. And so I want to welcome you, brothers, sisters, daddy, mommy, friends. Like I always like to call you because we are friends in the Lord Jesus. And I welcome you to this program, this hour. And I pray as you join us in this worship that the glory of the Lord will manifest upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to sing unto the Lord this morning from the hymn, Ho, my comrades. Ho, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcement now appearing. Victory is near. Who oh, therefore, for I am coming, Jesus signals to wave the eyes back to heaven. By thy grace, we will see the sea mighty. Who? Oh, Advancing, Satan leading on. Mighty men are thus falling, courage on most God. Who the fall, who the fall, for I am coming, Jesus signals thee. Wave the eyes back to heaven. By thy grace we will see the glory of banner waving, hear the trumpet blow. In our leader, nay, we triumph over every foe. Hold oh, the fort, for I am coming, Jesus. See Nasty, wave the eyes back to heaven by thy grace. We will fierce and on the battle rages, but our help is near. Oh, what comes a great commander? Cheers, my comrade. Who oh, therefore, for I am coming, Jesus signals thee. Wave the eyes about to heaven, by thy grace we will. I trust the hand of the Almighty to keep you above all the storms and the battle of life. In the name of Jesus. So I want to share the word of God with you this morning. Which I have titled. The battle of life. The battle of life. Many times a lot of us trivialize the issues of life. We take the issue of life with a very very light hand. Because. For some reasons, some of us do not have the needed understanding required to be able to carry them through this journey of life. Our patriarch in faith, men like Abraham, 
men like Isaac, men like Jacob, these were people who understand depth of life because they identify themselves as a pilgrim, a sojourner. And in the course of sojourning, there are bound to be conflict. There are bound to be battle. There are bound to be perils. There are bound to be issues. But I pray that in your life, you will overcome every battle in the mighty name of Jesus. That takes us quickly to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. And I read verse 7 to 9. The Bible says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. And the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That immediately tells us that we are in warfare. We are in war zone. Every minute, every second, every hour, every moment of our life is continually engaged in battle. And there is no person that is excusable from this battle. Whether you are young, whether you are a youth, whether you are an adult, whether you are old, this battle rages all throughout the generations, all throughout ages, all throughout communities, whether you are white or you are black. Wherever part of the world in which you choose to live, there is battle of life that each of us must confront and overcome as we move on with the journey of our life. My prayer again is that the power of God we incubate your life to defeat every battle in the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible tells us, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, again establish the fact that we are in a warfare. He said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, that established the fact that every man, every woman born into this world has battles to fight. May the battle of life not overcome you. May it not overwhelm your journey in the mighty name of Jesus. So everyone has battles to face. In the book of Job chapter 14, Job, the Bible says that man born of a woman is of few days and is full of trouble. When Pharaoh met Jacob and asked Jacob, how old are you? Jacob said, I am a man of few years, of about 130 years at that time, far lower than the age of my fathers, but with so many evil. And that tells us that even the man carrying the covenant to deliver in his time still had to fight battles for him to be able to deliver the mandate of that covenant. So there is a battle waiting for you somewhere. Maybe now you are even going through battles. It is all part of the preparation of your destiny. But my prayer is that you will not sink in that battle. In the mighty name of Jesus. There are physical battles. And there are spiritual battles. Physical battles are an example when the Israelites have to possess the land of Canaan. Of course, when they got to, if they are journeying to Canaan, they have to fight a lot of physical battles. They have to fight the powers of the people like AI. They have to fight all manner of the Jebusite. They have to fight the Anakim, even in the land of Canaan. The giant that were already there. They fought. But those are physical battles. But there are also spiritual battles, which we fight not with the eye that we can see, whereby we fight with, not with man, with hands, or with tools of man, 
So you have to fight that battle at a different level completely. And that is why Ephesians chapter 6 make us to understand that dimension of battle. That this is a battle against powers. It is battle against evil authority. It is battle against dominions of oppression. And these are things you cannot see or measure by the standard of physical things because they are spiritually designed. And this battle have made a lot of people, have rendered a lot of people completely useless because they do not understand that the battle of life is real and you have to fight it in order to win it. There is no body that is excusable from this battle. The fact is that you fight, you win. You fail to fight, you will sink. Therefore, I pray again for you that the power of the Lord will incubate you. That as you face this battle of life, you will conquer. You will conquer. You will conquer in the mighty name of Jesus. When you look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says, the Bible says, For the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You do not give weapon to people who are not in conflict. You do not give weapon to people who are not in battle. You do not give weapon to people who are not in a warfare. You arm people for a fight. Therefore, heaven prepare to arm you for a fight because the fight of life is real. The battle of life is real. It is as real as the water you drink. It is as real as the food you eat. It is as real as the cloth you wear. Every day people confront battle. A young man came to me not too long ago and he said there is this thing that is common in their street. And he shared his experience. And he said, look, his father was even the one that the street was named after. So he was not just a small person. His father, owned, his name was put on the street many, many years back. His father have long died and gone. But there is a peculiar problem with every child of landlord in that street. From beginning of the street to the ending of the street. What has happened? These people, we always dream that one woman, we always come to mess them up in the night. One particular face. And at a the time... They be, they, 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 each, each youth, each person, each child, we see it, but they don't understand it. And it's a problem that continues. Very soon they started discussing among themselves. And they discovered that, oh, you are also having that experience. They were like, oh, you are also having that experience. So from, big, from every house in the street, this problem was there, oppressing their life. And when they discovered that, oh, it is not only happening in my house, it is happening in every house that is in that street. So what the youth decided to do, they began to relocate from that street. That on their own, even when some of them are not ripe enough to live, they just want to live because they realize there is a problem. And nobody has been able to solve that problem for them. That is what we call battle. Yours may not be like that. I shared the report of a man when I was in the East, ministering uh, in the East. And a man who happened to be the firstborn of his own parent, discovered that his own parent became his enemy. A highly placed person, he was unknown, uh, uh, in an unexplainable way, he had to leave his work. And he came back home, everything that needed to belong to him, they gave it to another person. To the extent that his mother told him that I am your enemy. I pray for you that every enemy setting up battles against your life shall be disgraced by the power of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. So, battle is real. The, the, the story is endless. We can spend time talking about what people go through. But what I want you to know this hour is that whatever situation that is not comfortable for you that you are going through, there is a battle going on. Maybe you don't understand it. Maybe you don't know the mystery behind those battles. Maybe you don't know who institutionalized that battle against your life. What you need to do is to confront that battle in the name of the Lord. And the Lord will deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. Why the battles? Why are the battles? Why do people face battle? Why humanity is confronted with so much battle? Number one, because as it is written in the book of Revelation chapter 12, Satan and his host, the Bible say that the devil, the old serpent, Satan. So all the description were clearly put there. 
has been cast into this world. He's here. He has been cast out of heaven. As a result of the battle he staged in heaven. So, he's here. The Bible continues to say further in that uh, chapter. Hallelujah. And says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come into it. So, so the devil is here to cause trouble, to turn men against God, and to ensure that as many as possible he takes to hell. Now, hell is real. <laughs> and as much as heaven is real, there is no debate about the existence of these two places. If Satan is here to take people with him and to make sure they rebel against man. And so he inflicts them with a lot of battles. Why the battles? The battles are there as staged by your enemy in order to stop you from fulfilling your destiny. And I've said it again and again that you are not here by accident. If God doesn't need you here, he won't send you here. There is a purpose to which you are born into this world. Question is this, do you know that purpose? If you do, are you fulfilling that purpose? If not, why? So, the enemy intent purposely to ensure you do not fulfill your destiny. Therefore, they stage battles against you. There is no man of destiny before our time, now, and all that will ever be if the world still remains before Jesus came, that will not face battle if you must fulfill your destiny. Number three, why the battle? The battle is put in place to afflict people. To afflict people. To afflict people. There are a number of people who have thrown away their fleet, their faith because of affliction. There are a number of people that life has become completely unbearable for because of affliction. The Bible says that affliction makes a wise man mad in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Affliction brings about oppression, bring about pain, unexplainable pain in life. That I pray that every affliction that is in your life right now, let the fire of God consume them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them lose their power over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Why the battles? The battles are there to keep people bound. To keep people bound. To make sure they are kept in slavery. To make sure they prolong their stay in the school of slavery. To make sure they are bound, limited, tied. So that their life is not free to do what they are supposed to do. So that their destiny is not free to do what they are supposed to do. So that their spirit is not free to do what they are supposed to do. Bound and afflicted. So that the enemy can keep torturing them. I pray that you will not eat on the table of your enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. This is what happened. Why? There are battles of life. So that people will be afflicted. People can be bound. People can be kept in chains of slavery. You look at those Hebrew children who say they cannot sing the Lord's song. Because they were in place of slavery. Look at people that should have fulfilled great works because they are in slavery. But as the Lord delivered Nehemiah, as the Lord delivered the Israelites from the hands of Pharaoh, the Lord will arise for your sake and deliver you from every slavery, every band that have been tied around you, spiritually, physically, let them be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the power behind your slavery be disgraced out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? The enemy stage battles of life against us. It is to waste people's life. It is to waste people's life. We are not here. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in raiment. It's not in food. It is in righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are not here just to eat food. But when our life fails to produce or deliver what is supposed to deliver, what a wasted life. May you not be wasted in your generation in the mighty name of Jesus. 
This was the kind of battle that was staged against the life of Samson. Even though he started well, but they ensure that he finished not well. They ensure that he could not continue to carry on that assignment. That is battle. What a great man fell falling in the hand of Delilah. When you look at the life of King Saul, I keep wondering about the, that man's life. How he fell and fell uh, 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 at, at, the, at the Mount of Gibor. And David said, how are the mighty fallen and the weapons of warfare perishing? But how did Saul go to where he was? Battles of life. They made sure that his attention was completely shifted, not to give adequate regard and obedience to the God that have shown him and his family mercy. Who was Saul before he became king? A man of no recognition. He was of the Benjamin, the little and the smallest of the tribe. But yet, God lifted him up. God even made him a prophet that he prophesied in 1 Samuel chapter 10. What a colorful encounter. But yet, he was confronted with this battle because he lacks understanding that there is what we call battle of life. And he took life with levity. He took life that, okay, well, since I am a king, I can just do things anyhow and go away with it. No. There are battles stage managing people's life. There is what we call satanic network that are projected against people. There is power of bewitchment that are daily released to, against people in their environment, in their place of work, in, the, in the, where they live. Yes, there are causes that are daily issued against people in order to tie people's life down, to catch them and make them unproductive in their time. There are people who labor and they gather, but before they even die, what they gather have wasted in their life. When the enemy be, be decide to move a battle from the life of the parent to the life of the children, you see parents who have done so much, and yet their children are nowhere to be reckoned with. I pray for you this hour that every of such battle that is waiting at the gate of your children, let the ground open and swallow them up in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are your enemies and have decided to become the enemy of your children, because they have failed over your life, they will fail over the life of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. So the enemy wants to waste people's life. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, For the enemy, for the thief comment, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if the enemy succeeded in stealing from you, if the enemy succeeded to destroy what you are laboring for, if the enemy succeeded to Kill your dream, your ambition, your success, your breakthroughs, even your love and passion for the things of God. What are you on earth for? You are as useless as anything. Therefore, I pray, wherever the onslaught of the enemy is against you, let the hand of the living God arise for your sake this hour and break that shackle away from you in the mighty name of Jesus. What do we need to do in order to be able to deal with the battles of life? Because they are there. You may not know the hour. You may not know the time. You may not know where they are waiting. You may not know the route through which they will come. Because sometimes people make wrong judgment of where battles are coming from. You may not know. There are a lot of wicked ambush. David said, he said, they lay wait for me. And the due diligence search of my step. May those that are monitoring you and you do not know, may they not cash up with your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. May heaven blindfold them and frustrate their steps against your life in the mighty name of Jesus. What do you need to do? Number one is to understand where the battleground is. And the first thing you need to do, understand where the battleground is. Now, the battleground is nowhere else but inside you. That is where the battleground is. Your mind is the biggest battleground which you must learn to have control over, which you must learn to have hold over, which you must learn to be able to put in order, which you must learn to be able to put in the right gear. Your mind. Every battle confronting you we either stay long or it will be defeated. That we depend 
on the position of your mind. Any battle that you lose in your mind, you will lose it physically. Any battle you can win in the realm of your mind, you will win it physically. Of course, with the power of God backing you up. And that is why God told Joshua. He said in Joshua chapter 1, he told Joshua almost about five times. Be thou courageous. Only be thou courageous. Courage is a thing of the mind. You cannot face battle without being courageous. You cannot face battle without having your mind clear that you must fight this battle and you must win this battle. Without making sure that the enemy does not gain control of your mind. You see people facing battle and they keep jumping here and there. They are scared. They are afraid. They, they, today they pray. Tomorrow they confess negatively. Because the enemy is taking over, manipulating their mind. And once the enemy takes control of your mind, it's like a living time bomb inside the life of that person. Waiting to burst. So you need to deal with your mind. You need to put your mind and feed your mind with the power of God, with the word of God, with great assurance of faith and with strength of prayer that this battle will not win over you. And the Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. So you need to determine to fight. You need to determine to fight. Time will not permit me to share a lot of personal experiences. You can win. But you must determine to fight. Number two, you must be willing to fight. You must be willing. Nobody will fight this battle for you. Listen to me carefully. It is a personal battle just as your destiny is a personal destiny. Nobody will fulfill your destiny for you. Therefore, nobody will fight your battle for you. You must be willing to fight that battle by yourself. Jesus was the Getty was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was to do the final call of his destiny. He told his disciple, wait here and join me in prayer. By the time he came back to them, they were all asleep. What a critical moment. May you not fail in the day of your battle in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, you must be ready to fight. After you are determined, and you are willing, then you must be ready. Get yourself equipped. Get yourself up. Enough of the crying. Enough of the wailing. Enough of the sympathy. Somebody did not do this for you. Somebody not did that for you. We not help. Get on your battlefield. Wear your battle armor and go into the battlefield. For in the name of the Lord, you shall conquer. Get into the battle. And you will see the army of heaven available to fight this battle for you. I see you victorious in the name of the Lord. And the battle of life shall crumble as many as they are. They may, that may be coming your way, they shall fall flat before you. You will walk triumphantly to fulfill your destiny and to enjoy the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Pray for you this hour that the mighty Jehovah we stretch forth his hand over your life. We stretch forth his wings as eagle over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, as he was mighty in the life of David, to defeat Goliath, to defeat his enemies, to defeat the army that gathered against him, so shall the hand of the Lord be mighty in your life, to defeat every array of wickedness that stand against you. In the mighty name of Jesus, whether the battle is coming from your parents or what they come from your ancestors that we call generational battle, today that battle is broken in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, that battle, let it lose its hold over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the power of God come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, and take you out of that battle, set you free, and put you on a solid rock. To, to, to stay, to fulfill your destiny in the land of the living. And I pray that the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ we grant you grace, we grant you his love, we grant you his presence, and we grant you his power in order to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. Soak you in the blood of Jesus. And I pray this year, it doesn't matter what it is called, you will not die. In the mighty name of Jesus, strange diseases will not locate your life. Go and prosper. Jesus' mighty name, 
we pray. Friend, I want to thank God for this privilege to share the word of God with you. In case you have not given your life to Jesus, I want to invite you to this fellowship of grace, this fellowship of power, this fellowship of dominion, that you might see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Jesus died for you, and you only need to do is to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. You can say this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you. I confess my sins and I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Give me the grace to serve you and write down my book, my name in the book of life. Amen. God bless you. You can watch our program on the church website www.aapchurch.org and you can also pay your tithe and your offering via the online platform. You can join any of our services and our various branches. The Lord be with you. Remain blessed in Jesus' name.